We're talking about children who have been trafficked into the country. We're talking about children who have been severely abused, abandoned, neglected. They're all unaccompanied minors, children who do not have a parent or legal guardian who can look after them. Uh, they're really traumatized. They've been through a lot in their very short life, and um, they're struggling every day to try to survive. For the vast majority of the children that we meet, this is all about surviving, trying to get to a safe place where they can be protected. It, it was really shocking when I first started interviewing them and realizing that my job was more social work than than I had, you know, I was trained as a, as a lawyer, um, but it turned out that the role was much more social work because these kids were, what, what you were really doing when you're talking to them, number one, assessing if they have a, a legal claim to stay in this country, if, if they'll qualify for a visa. Number two, explaining to them what's happening, you know, where they are, why they're there. But number three, giving them hope, if they have hope. And that was the part that was, that was the part that was so shocking is that you would see these really wonderful kids who were lost their light you know they were their souls were were beaten down and dead and to be able to say to them you have you are worth something and you will have a future and see them start come to life you know it's really very fulfilling Yes, there is a need for immigration reform. What is sad is that in this debate about conservatives and liberals and Democrats and Republicans, immigrants, children, are being collateral damage. They are right in the middle of, uh, of the shooting and uh, they need to understand if they do have a future or if they don't. And it's time for the Congress to say, to respond to them, at least to respond to them. There are very few resources to help children who are being held in these um, basically detention shelters. Agencies such as the uh, Americans for Immigrant Justice don't have the resources to do an adequate job of assisting as many as uh, children as they would like to help. I think they have four lawyers who are dedicated to this children's project, but the number of children in the shelter last year was 70 or so, and it has doubled this year to about 175 children. When I go into a detention center and I'm speaking, let's say, to a mom uh, who's been detained and is facing imminent deportation, her biggest fear is forcible separation uh, from her U.S. citizen children. And oftentimes, uh, they're in remote facilities. Uh, there may have been uh, a hearing scheduled to determine whether or not that mom is going to lose custody of her child and she doesn't even know it, uh, or she's not able to appear because she's in detention. It's, it's a huge, huge problem. These people only ask for the opportunity to become legal, to come out of the shadows where they live in fear of a knock on the door in the dead of night or an immigration raid to their workplace. Like John Daljean, today's immigrants only look for the opportunity to redeem themselves through honest work. These people, like the dreamers, are not breaking our laws. They are being broken by them. Well, we've been uh, advocating for an immigration reform for over 10 years. And after not having succeeded in pre preceding Congresses, we think that this year is an opportunity that Congress will finally bring about a comprehensive immigration reform. We have 12 million people living in America that deserve a status, and they deserve to contribute to our country's growth. If you look at countries like Japan and others, uh, they're in an economic stalemate because they have a shrinkage in their population. Were it not for immigration, America would be in the same place. We need to celebrate what immigration does and its role in the economic prosperity for all Americans. Uh, for those that want to understand it a different way, let's get away from the humane, legal, moral uh, obligations which I feel we have and let's talk about pure numbers. I mean, if you create a normalization process for the 11 million or so estimated illegal immigrants in this country, the estimates are that the impact to the national economy would be three trillion dollars. Uh, you know, when we talk about 16 trillion in debt, on the one hand, uh, three trillion would go a very long way uh, to helping us bring that under control. So even if 
uh, I can't persuade you on doing this for the right reasons. Look at it in terms of sheer numbers, and the sheer numbers are very, very positive over the long term for America. There's nothing more important than dealing with an issue like this because it involves human beings and involves people who are trying to achieve a dream. And, uh, and now is the time. Uh, fortunately, Washington's woken up to the stark reality uh, that we need to do something and we need to do it now. This is a, a way to celebrate the bright future of this community if we can let immigration reform take place. You know, the impact that, that these immigration policies and practices have had in our communities, it's enormous. And what's a little troubling to me is that so few people are aware of it.